How's it going, everybody? We're back for more Let's Drink Final Fantasy Solo Thief. And, um, now I know that, um, you know, we left off last time with me having beaten the pirates and doing just a little bit of leveling. Um, um, I've done a little bit in the meantime, as you can see here, close to level 10, but obviously there's a long way to go before uh, Mr. Fucked here is ready to take on the Marsh Cave, and obviously even longer before he is ready to take on Astos. Now, I know that, and I'm not going to deny that. Uh, I think that's probably too many Kaizoku to fight, but let's get in a quick death. Because there's going to happen. There's going to be death. So, um, Guy on the uh, Final Fantasy board on GameFAX has specifically told me, he has been very very specific about this. He said that he wants to see the grinding. He wants to specific. He, he definitely wants that. It's like, you know, I want a video of you just fighting goddamn random monsters for fucking ever. You know, fuck you. Um, so, alright. Here I am. And these guys are gonna kill me because there were four Kaizoku. That's too many for a level 9 thief to take a loan. And I could probably, like, heal and maybe beat them, but I'm pretty much just gonna say, you know what, guys? You got me. You know, you jumped me. There's four of you. There's one of me. Uh, just, you know, beat me to death. I should probably really have healed when I got down to two and still had, like, 40 hit points left, but... As you can see, they murdered me. So, um, I was specifically requested to do a video of grinding, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, right off the bat, let me tell you that I'm not fighting this. Um, this is not going to be me uh, talking about Final Fantasy for, you know, however long I do this, an hour or what the fuck ever. Um, it's just not. That that would be ridiculous. I don't have that much to say about grinding. Like, okay, you know, as soon as I get to level 10, then I'm going to go down to Elfland and start trying to fight ogres. Okay? That is useful information, but it's not an hour's worth of information. Right? So, these guys are going to kill me, aren't they? I tell you what, I figure I should have been able to take them, but I went in at less than full health because of the fucking Sahags, and now they are going to kill me. That's pretty lame. That... That kind of sucks, actually. I'm not gonna lie to you on this point. I'm gonna tell it like it is. I'm gonna call it straight. And, uh, I don't know. We'll see. It's, uh, it's coming down to the nitty gritty. All right. So, is that gonna level me? I don't know. No, it doesn't quite level me. It gets me like halfway to where I need to level. It does get me a lot of gold. So, gold is pretty. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Useless uh, to me right now. Um, I mean, like, obviously there are uses for gold, but let me show you. I've purchased 83 heal potions and 9 pures. I'm going to buy more pures, obviously, and I'll max out on heals. Um, but basically, you know, I'm at a point in the game now where the amount of grinding that I'm going to do is going to get me money. You know, I'm not, I'm not hurting for cash, all right? So... Alright, well, okay. <laughs> ah, drink a little more. And, um... Get the hell out of this fight. Actually, I probably 
should just let them kill me instead of like take the time to try to get away. Okay. You know, whatever. Um, now the next fight's gonna kill me, and I'm gonna have wasted time of getting to that next fight. So, eh, what the, eh, well, let's see. All right, open with a crit. It opens with a good hit, so that sucks. I think it's another good hit in. I gotta hit. See, I should fucking be able to kill this thing, and I'm not gonna because I came in like an idiot. Less than full health, and it. Uh, 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 real close now, real close. And now he kills me. Okay. So, there we go. Alright, now. So, what am I going to talk about other than Final Fantasy for the time that you're watching this? Um, a lot of things. Um, I have some topics. And um, I'm going to go through them. So, uh, first topic. Um, let me see here. Oh, okay. I should be able to kill this one. Now, it is well known. Well, okay. It's well known in my head. And maybe you know, maybe you don't. That I am missing this shark a whole hell of a lot. But, uh, okay sucks. Um, I should be able to kill this thing. I've been... I got to this point. I got to this point at level 9 by killing sharks. Specifically. It was like the thing that I did. I went out and I killed a shark and then I would go back. Okay. So now I'm level 10. Good times. Let's go save at level 10. So now we're going to go down to Elfland and everything is going to be completely different. So... A uh, topic that we could discuss. Well, we can't really discuss it because you're not here talking back to me. But I'm going to talk about it. And uh, you're going to listen. Or, you know, I should probably say this. Um, I'm not offended if you have decided to turn this video off when you found out that it was just going to be me grinding. That doesn't bother me. I understand that. I wouldn't want to watch it. I wouldn't want to watch it myself, you know, I'm, you know, that's fine, it's, it doesn't upset me. Now, alright, now I'm poisoned, I fucking hate arachnids, why did I even fight them? I should have run away, they're not worth it, you know, um, ogres are worth it, arachnids are not worth it, this is not a good use of my time. I guess I am talking about Final Fantasy more than I expected to, but, um, but, okay, that, you see, now I have the two hits, by the way, at level 10, that's why being level 10 was so important for this, uh, for coming down here and fighting this, just to throw that out there if you didn't, like, know why I decided to come down here at level 10, okay. So, it's known that I'm you know, big football fan, right? And I'm a big Cowboys fan. Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? All right. So, hmm. Eh, okay, I got 150 gold out of that, but, all right. You can see instantly, though, that you get so much more in the way of experience. And now that it takes me, you know, thousands of experience to level, it's a good thing to get a lot of experience from each fight. So let's see how much the end is down here. All right, it's 100 gold. So you basically, you know, you have to earn more money. This is the guy that says save our prince, by the way. This little fucker. Okay. So, all right. Now, as a Cowboys fan, you probably hate me because, you know, I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh. Okay, I'm not fighting that. That's too many. Just, you know, like one ogre right now. Maybe with one creep. But any more than that, and it's not worth it. I'll probably die on the next fight from taking that damage. Whatever. So, obviously, you know, people hate the Cowboys. People want to say the Cowboys fans are dicks. And I am. 
you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You know, I'm better than all of you because I've chosen the superior football team to uh, be a fan of. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I, I, I can, hmm, he hits hard, um, yeah, he hits hard, I don't know if I can win this fight coming in at lower hit points like that, oh, it's gonna come down to the wire, let's see, come on, alright, if I go first, I didn't, oh, he didn't kill me though, Ah, look at that. Alright, so I'm gonna get a bunch of experience. Well, okay. 258. Okay, but... 200 gold, too, you see. And that's the advantage of these fights over, say, a shark. Because the shark does give you that much experience, but only 66 gold. So it's not enough for one fight to justify coming to the end. Whereas, by earning 200 gold, I can stay at the end for 100 gold and still make a profit, it is uh, financially feasible for me to do that in perpetuity, okay? So that's important. You have to make sure that you're going to have enough money to keep the gravy train rolling. Now, um, back to... I guess I really am talking about Final Fantasy in this more than I ever would have thought um, for grinding, but eventually it's just going to settle into me doing fights without having much to say. Um, so let me get back to it here and tell you that, you know, as a fan of the football, the uh, National Football League, I uh, consider myself to be, you know, a pretty evolved fan. You know, in that I can, I can look at a player, and I can accept, you know, his strengths and his weaknesses. You know, um, whatever they may be. You know, uh, I'm saying you know a lot, and I'm sorry for that. But there's not much I can do about it. I can't really stop myself at this point. Um, so. And so as this, you know, evolved fan who can look at people, uh, the players, um, their strengths and their weaknesses, and acknowledge, you know, both the good and the bad, I want to talk to you about my favorite players who are not on the Cowboys, you see. Because obviously, you know, I could go on for days, but I'm not fighting goddamn wolves. <laughs> I could go on for days about, you know, the Cowboys and how great they are, you know. But you don't want to hear that. Because I don't like wolves. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm going to say that. And you're not going to see me fight wolves that often. I mean, that's just the way it is. They're not worth it. Okay? They're not. Um, but I can go on for days about how great the Cowboys are, how great everyone on the Cowboys are, you know with certain um, limitations and exceptions to that, but, you know, you don't hear me talk as much about the people who are out there who aren't cowboys, and, and I feel like they deserve some recognition for what they have done and what they've accomplished in their lives and in their careers. So, number one on that list. My favorite players who are not on the Cowboys. And, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna use, you know, people who were on the Cowboys, you know. I'm not gonna go out ah, ah, Mary and Barber, you know, because I always liked Mary and I always liked Mary and Barber. And I didn't like that the Cowboys cut him last off season. And I didn't like that they did it on the first day for the lockout ended. I feel like he got a really raw deal, you know? And I never trusted to shard choice. Um, I mean, like, he had a couple good games here and there, don't get me wrong. You know, he was not, like, the worst player that I've ever seen. But at the same time, exactly 100 gold, therefore justifies going to the inn 
to make sure I keep that 246 experience points. It's not like he was the worst player I've ever seen, you know, to shard choice. But, by the same token, you know, he did fumble a lot. You know? Even prior to this past season, where he got cut and went on to play for the Redskins and the Bills. Um, oh, just an, oh, yeah, this is a good fight. I like, I like this fight. This is a good one because it's really easy for me to win. Minimal risk unless he over crits. It'll give me enough gold to go to the inn again. So, that's nice. Um, I really play it safe when I'm grinding. Like, I'll be like, oh, you know, I got a little bit of money. Let's go back to the end. I got some experience points. Save it. I don't want to do that fight again. You know, it's a numbers game. But, um... And obviously, Felix Jones, so injury prone. You know, every year, little dude's getting hurt. And I like Felix Jones. I think he's a talented player. I think he's got the tools to succeed in the National Football League. The problem with Felix Jones is that if you look at him cross-eyed, the man crumples like a Mazda. And not like a Mazda 3, a frickin' Miata, okay? He's made of goddamn tinfoil. And... So you've got two running backs, you've got Tashard Choice, and you've got Felix Jones, and you've got Marion Barber, who, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, is not the fastest man on the face of the earth. But can you tackle him? No. You know? I mean, he gets hit, and he will stumble, and... Sometimes he will fumble. But he does not go down without a fight. You know, you have, if you're like me, and you've watched every Cowboys game that, you know, may have been played. I, I don't think I've actually watched all of them. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to sit there and go, Oh, you know, I found tapes from 1968, and I want No. Okay. I've watched, you know, probably every major Cowboys game. And I've certainly watched, you know, every regular season game, uh, barring those that, you know, were not broadcast in this area. Most of them were broadcast in my area. Um, oh, look at that. That is nice. Sadly, not worth enough gold to go to the inn over, but at the same time, I'm still at full health, so maybe I'll get another fight in and nothing will kill me. Um, oh, oh, okay, and that is perfect. You know, one ogre after one arachnid. Nice. Um, what was I saying? Uh, but I, I've seen, I've probably seen, you know, maybe 90% of the games Marion Barber played for the Cowboys. Okay? Conservative estimate, maybe more. Um,. Man is tough to tackle. I liked him. I thought he had good heart. I thought he had good spirit. Uh, did he have weaknesses as a running back? Yes. Do I think that he is an excellent starter? No. Um, I think that he is at his best after another running back has taken, you know, most of the carries of the game, softened up the defense to where his ability to absorb punishment becomes a really great asset. You know, like... Alright, think about this. Like, back when Julius Jones was the, was the Cowboys' starting running back, um, you know, he was not a very good player. He ran into the pile every time, got two or three yards every time, and then around the third quarter, Marion Barber would start coming in, and he'd be ripping off 10, 15, 20-yard gains you know, every time. Guys are hanging off him, not able to tackle him, because they've been tired out dealing with another running back and dealing with our potent offensive line, you know? So, so that's what I'm saying here, is that I feel like Marion Barber served a very important role for the Cowboys, and I feel like he didn't get respect 
and I feel like he got cut because they didn't respect his contribution. And that's a, that's unfortunate. But I'm not just gonna say, oh, you know, he's my favorite player who's not on the Cowboys. Because he was on the Cowboys. You know, obviously. So, you know, have at you and such. Um, so, number one, and this is not really in any particular order, I'm just saying number one because it's the first one I'm mentioning. Darrell Rivas, right? Cornerback, New York Jets. Rivas Island, right? And the reason for that is, in fact, Rivas Island. Um, I remember watching the game um, a couple seasons back um, where it was the Jets and the Patriots, and they put Darrell Rivas on Randy Moss, single coverage through the whole game. And I remember the announcer, um, not sure which one, one of CBS's, obviously. Uh, ooh, two ogres. I wonder if I can take them. Uh, let's find out. Let's find out. So I remember one of the announcers saying that, you know, he had talked to Darrell Rivas prior to the game, and, you know, this could all be bullshit. You know, it, may, it might have been some other dude that actually talked to Darrell Rivas and gave this story to the CBS announcer to pass along to the audience. You know, whatever. Point is, I cannot take on two ogres. That is clear to me now. Alright, down to one, though. Alright, since I'm probably going to die anyway, let's try healing. Huh? Alright, let's try healing again. Alright, not pissing against the wind. This is worth it if I can uh, win this fight. Okay, I might be able to. Um, and so they're like, you know, we asked him, you know, how he felt going up one on one against Randy Moss. And they go, and he said, well, I'll just be out here alone all day on Revis Island. Getting down to it here. I might do this. Yeah! Look at that! And so they say that line, that Revis Island line, and I'm like, oh my god. This is a great, great man. I'm a fan of this player, Darrell Rivas. Now and forever. And obviously, you know, he did his little, you know, hold out and, you know, whatever. But, be that as it may, Darrell Rivas, great man, great football player, and he is one of my favorite players, not on the Cowboys. Alright, and, uh, who's next? Um,. Let's see, uh, okay, um, Charles Johnson, Megatron, the Detroit Lions, wide receiver. Uh, number one, because his name is Megatron. I think that should be pretty self-explanatory given, uh, me, <laughs> that I would, you know, be drawn to a player who gives himself the name Megatron, but also because he is a phenomenal receiver. And, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, how many touchdowns the NFL takes away from him, where he catches the ball, and he holds on to 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 the ball, and, the ball, and then he decides, on his own, clearly of his own volition, to set the ball on the ground because he is done holding it and has scored a touchdown. No matter how many touchdowns they take away from him, or that, he is still awesome. He is still Charles Johnson. He is still Megatron. I don't really have a whole lot to say other than that. He's a great receiver. He has a great name. And he routinely gets screwed by the refs. So, there's that. Uh, who's next? Uh, okay. Yeah, 
this is a good one. Uh, Tyler Polko. <laughs> Quarterback. Quarterback. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Tyler Balco. Um, okay, so, let me tell you my Tyler Balco story. Alright. How much points do I have left? Okay, let's go for another fight. Um, Tyler Balco. Uh, I can't fight two ogres without being at full health to start. And now I'm nowhere near full health. Okay, well, I got 100 gold for beating those asps. So, let me make sure I get the uh, XP from that save then. Alright, fine. Um, so, my Tyler Falco story. Uh, the second game he started against the uh, Steelers was on Sunday night. And, um, I hate the Steelers, obviously, but, you know, I, I watched the game with two friends, and they're like, okay, well, you know, who do you think's gonna win? You know, two of us are like, well, the Steelers, because they're Tyler Polko, right? And the other guy's like, well, you know, what do you know about Tyler Polko? I don't know much about Tyler Polko, but I know that last week, the week before this game, you know, he threw three interceptions in his, in his first start. He's like, so you're making your judgment about him based on this one game that he has played, that he has started. I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm gonna just get killed here, by the way, so I'm just gonna fight so that they will kill me. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Please make it quick. Um, I'm like, yeah, you know, I am. I'm basing my judgment of this player based on his performance. It's like, yeah, but it's one game, you know. You know, in ten years, you may look back and say, wow, you know, Tyler Polko, he sure is great. He sure did turn out to be a great player. I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. He's like, you don't know. I'm like, all right. I don't know, but at the same time, you know, I know, because I have, a, I have an ability to judge talent, you know, in a football player. I've seen enough to know that there are signs, and, and because what you have to understand is, obviously, not every interception is a quarterback's fault. We can't... You can't look at someone's stats and, and and specifically from those stats, without context, make a decision on the worthiness of that player to be a part of the National Football League. Okay? I mean, that's... That's cut and dry. That is a lot of experience, and I'm not letting it go to waste. You'll see, by the way, that even doing this, like, one fight at a time, I am close to level 11 already. Which is really good, because it took a long goddamn time to get from 9 to 10, let me tell you. <laughs> hmm. So, I mean, obviously you need context to determine which stats are, you know, more valid than others. Okay. I understand that. But those were some bad interceptions that Tyler Paul threw, so I, like, you know, no. There's no way that I'm going to look back in ten years, I tell this guy, and I'm going to say, oh, wow, Tyler Paul was great. It's not going to happen. He's a terrible player. He'll be out of the league. He'll be out of the league for, in ten years, it wouldn't surprise me to learn that he'd been out of the league for nine years. Okay. So the game starts, and... And, you know, me and the and the one guy who, who were like, you know, Tyler Polko sucks. We're making jokes about Tyler Polko the whole way. Like, every time he touches the ball, we're like, ah, oh, 
Here comes Tyler Palco, he's so standing in the pocket. Tyler Palco, he's got the eye of a champion. He's got the accuracy of... I don't remember what we said, but it was something really quite accurate. <laughs> okay. Now I really am, like, right at the cusp of level 11. And I really don't want to waste that, and I got 100 gold. I'm really going to have to start making a little more money so that I can get some more pure potions, because I'm going to start running low on those. And obviously I have 1,500 gold. I'm not hurting for cash, but I don't want to go blow it all right now. Um, so anyway. Ah! And so we're making Tyler Balco jokes, and... You know, Roethlisberger doesn't play well that game. He does not play well that game. I think, if I remember correctly, it was the week after that Browns game where he got hurt. Um, the ankle injury. I'm not sure anymore. It's been a little while. But I think it might have been. So he's not playing well. You know, I'm like, huh? You know? Roethlisberger, he's hurt. You know, they mean he's bringing in Charlie Fry. Char is it Charlie Fry or Charlie Batch? Now, I think it's Charlie Batch now, actually. Okay, so they mean he's bringing in Charlie Batch. Ho ho ho. You know, and obviously they don't. Okay, so that was a strong hit point level up. I did not get a strength up this level. And I don't really feel like doing a fight again. So, I'm not going to. I'm not going to reset. I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. So, um, so Palco, he throws three interceptions in the game against the Steelers. <laughs> and so all night we're like, ah. Here comes your boy Tyler Palco. He's like, ah, you know, I just said he might he might turn out to be a good player. That doesn't mean that he will, I just said he might. Okay, but, you know, we said he was terrible, you said, oh, no, he's not. You know, like, you had the inside inside information on Tyler Palco. So, eventually, obviously, I actually am gonna die here, huh? So... Oh, oh, a crit. Alright, let's try healing. Not die here. Come on, crit. Not a crit. Come on, crit. No, 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 not a crit. Okay, now come on, crit. Uh, good hit, though. Oh, I missed with one of the hits. Oh. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna die here. Okay. So actually, I guess I do get another chance at that level up. Um, so anyway, a few weeks later, uh, Tyler Palco was benched for uh, Kyle Orton. And we started making jokes about, how was the Tyler Palco era for you? Uh, so Tyler Palco, not a good player, but one of my personal favorites who's not on the Cowboys, just because good story, well, fun story, and, you know, a lot of uh, jokes and humor that go along with him. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I think I think that's, that's worth putting him on the list. Um, okay, another one. I mean, I guess I have to say it. Joe Montana. Okay, quarterback, San Francisco 49ers, and later Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, one of the greatest of all time. Okay, I, I'm not going to sit here and deny Joe Montana, okay? And there are guys who are on those great lists, the, the rosters of greatness, who I can't stand, you know? Steve Young, Brett Favre, uh, Elway. Alright, still did not actually get... Um, the strength up, but got enough money to go to the inn and need to heal, and don't want to do the fight again. So, not getting the strength at level 11. Sucks, but I really don't feel like resetting. It is 
what it is. And I don't like Elway for the same reason I don't like Eli Manning. You know, these are guys that thought they were above the draft. They wanted to dictate terms, dictate terms, choose where they were going to play. When a team that drafted them was a team they didn't want to play for, they just decided that they weren't going to play. They forced a trade so that they could go play somewhere else. I'm sorry, but... If you want to pick where you work, go out on a job interview, get a real job. Now, look, football is a tremendous sport. It is a wonderful game. You need a lot of talent and a lot of skill to play it. I died there because I stupidly, you know, decided to my two creeps in the over. Um, you need a lot of talent, a lot of skill to play it. But these are... I'm going to fight them again anyway, aren't I? Yeah, okay. Um, you need a lot of talent, a lot of skill to play football on a professional level, okay? Know that? Accept that. I do. But... At the end of the day, it's a game. It's a sport. And... Enjoy watching it? Yes. Absolutely I do. But here's the thing. I'm getting a lot of crits in this fight. Here's the other thing. You know, if you're John Elway, if you're Eli Manning, if you're any of these guys, and you are gifted, talented, blessed, if you will, enough to play this game on a professional level, to be so good at playing a game that people pay you to do it, to do something that you did for free, that something that you pay to do as a kid. You know, you pay to play football as a kid. You join a Pee Wee League. You pay to do this. And you can get so good at something that you pay to do, that other people pay you millions of dollars to do it. And then you have the unmitigated gall to say, I don't want to play in Baltimore. I, well, I wouldn't want to play in Baltimore either. I don't want to play in Baltimore. I don't want to play in San Diego, California. San Diego, a whale's vagina. What the hell? You know, that to me is arrogance. That to me is just the worst. The fact that these guys, these, and I'm sure there are other people that have done this, but these are the two that always come to my mind as the biggest, uh, the biggest defenders, okay? It's not fair to, you know, the hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people that would love to be in their position that have the drive and the desire, but not necessarily that same skill. It is a slap in the face to those people to see a guy like John Elway or a guy like Eli Manning go and say, Your millions of dollars aren't good enough for me, Baltimore. Your millions of dollars are not good enough for me, San Diego. I would much prefer to play elsewhere. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. It's ridiculous. I'm never gonna turn the corner on those guys. I respect what John Elway accomplished as a player. As a human being, I think he's garbage. And Eli Manning? Look. I don't care... 
Eli Manning wins five Super Bowls on his own. I don't care if Eli Manning cures cancer and AIDS. I don't care if Eli Manning personally comes to my house and gives me twenty million dollars. I don't like Eli Manning. I don't respect Eli Manning or his accomplishments. How can I? He's not a good player. He's a lucky player. I know. Better lucky than good. But I don't have any good feelings whatsoever for Eli Manning. He is the same as, as Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. Okay? Everyone was to love Tim Tebow. <sighs> Tim Tebow's not a football player. Tim Tebow doesn't play football. Maybe Tim Tebow plays what they called football a hundred years ago. But I'm sorry, if you throw the ball eight times in a game, you're not playing football anymore. Okay? You're just not. It's not the same sport. It's not the same kind of game. And I don't know what it is, but it's not football. Not American football, okay? USA, USA. And I don't care about his religion, alright? He can be as religious as he wants. I don't care. I care about the fact that the version of the game that he wants to play, that he is deluding people into thinking is successful, might catch on. That's what gets to me. What if it works? What if people actually sit there and go, you know, if we do what Tim Tebow does, will win like Tim Tebow. Not realizing that obviously it's actually Denver's defense that causes them to win any games whatsoever by virtue of keeping them close throughout the entire game when Tebow sucks for three and a half quarters and suddenly decides to complete three passes in a row in the fourth quarter and oh my god, he's the best player ever. I might actually win this fight, huh? Um... So, I mean, that's the thing to me. That's what gets me about it. Because if people start to think that that's working, if people start to think that that's football, then that is what will become football. If people decide that it's successful, and people will decide that it's successful if he manages to win, you know eight games next season, if he even goes 500 next season, and pray to God he doesn't, but if he goes 500 next season, people are going to start saying, you know, maybe Tebow's not the guy, but that style, that style will sure work if we get the right guy, and people are going to start emulating that, and people are going to start using that style, and that is going to become what we see in the NFL, and that terrifies the shit out of me. Because I don't want to watch that. Okay, I don't even want to know that that exists. It's offensive to me. And you don't have to agree. You can love Tebow. Just understand that you're killing America by doing it. Alright. So let's move on to another, uh, another, uh, favorite non-Cowboys player of mine. Um, whew, I got a little, uh, hmm, I got a little hot under the collar there. Um, let's make it lighthearted again, shall we? Okay. Zoltan! That's right. Zoltan Metzko. Punter. New England Patriots. Now, why is a punter a favorite player? Okay, well, because his name is Zoltan. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Um, 
I love the movie Dude, Where's My Car? And obviously, like everybody else on the planet, I love the movie Big. And Zoltan manages to reference both of them. Zoltan is not just... Alright, let's let these guys kill me. Uh, Zoltan is not just, you know, the fortune teller machine in Big that makes the little kid turn into Tom Hanks. But Zoltan is also a powerful organization in Dude Wears My Car seeking the Continuum Transfunctioner, a mysterious and powerful device whose mystery is only exceeded by its power. Zoltan! So, you know, obviously, you know, when a player comes along, and his name is Zoltan? I had to kill by a fucking creep. When a player comes along and his name is Zoltan? How much experience do I even need to get to level 12, by the way? Oh my god, okay. When a player comes along and his name is Zoltan, you take notice. You take stock of the situation. You understand that something wonderful, something mystical, something magical is taking place. And I remember the first time... I don't remember what game it was anymore. It might... I don't know. It might have actually... Was it the same game as the Darrell Rivas Rivas Island game? I don't even know anymore. But... I remember watching t the TV, watching a Patriots game, and seeing them send out the punter, and seeing the graphic that said, That man's name is Zoltan. And my life changed forever, because I knew at that moment that there was a football player named Zoltan. And that one killed me. I guess that's a double meaning there. Uh, I was killed by that fight, and I was killed by a player named, being named Zoltan. So, um, uh, let's get another one. Let's get one more. Last one, number five, I guess. Is this the fifth one? I think. I haven't actually been keeping track in my head, so... Here's hoping it's number five. Um... Um, who was I just thinking about? God, what's his name? Um, what the fuck is his name? The guy, the guy who, oh, okay, yeah, 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 James Laurinaitis, uh, defensive player of some kind for the St. Louis Rams. Uh, because James Laurinaitis is the son of Road Warrior Animal from professional wrestling, of the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. I mean, I just think it's really cool that this kid, you know, the son of Animal goes out and becomes a tremendous, tremendous football player. Well, let's be clear. Dude's got skill. Dude's got talent. He got drafted by a terrible Rams team and didn't complain about it like Eli Manning or John Elway would have. <sighs> Those wounds are still fresh, I think. But, um... So, I, yeah, I think he's a great player. I think he's a great prospect. And I think that he is going to continue to be a great player. So, I have respect for him. And I think he's good. Oh! Oh, okay. Also, another one. I guess I was going to cut myself off at five, but I'm going to six. Indominus Sue. Uh, also a defensive player from the Detroit Lions. I know, he's... Obviously... Obviously, he is, how you say... Uh, sometimes a dirty player. He's a bit of a douche. Because, <laughs> um, you know, he stomped on the guy's face. And... He always hits people late. And... He 
makes really bad excuses about stepping on people's faces and hitting people late. Uh, but you know, at the same time... Yeah, and dude is a, like a great, great killing machine. You know, if he can ever get himself in check and stop, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, being a dickweed? Then I think he will turn out just fine. Ah, you know, finally they poison me. Assholes. <laughs> um, I actually spent a lot longer talking about these guy, uh, these football players than I expected, so I'm gonna rattle off uh, a few more players that I like for various reasons who are not on the Cowboys. Um, okay. Uh, Richie Incognito, because his last name is Incognito. I think that should go without saying. Um, dude's name is Incognito. That is badass. Uh, what else we got? Um... I guess I could have written some of this down, but that probably wouldn't have been quite as organic. I like the fact that I'm just kind of coming up with this off the cuff right now. Uh, who else we got? Uh, oh, Joe Webb. Oh, Joe Webb, quarterback, Minnesota Vikings. Um, so it started out as a joke, like Tyler Palco. Um, last, last, the season before... Uh, the 2010, in the 2010 season, Brett Favre's last season, when he was getting hurt at the end of the year and he wasn't going to be able to continue the streak, and Tavares Jackson uh, comes in as the starter. And Tavares Jackson then also gets hurt, and the Vikings put in their third string quarterback, Joe Webb. And I start being like, ah! Oh. Comes Joe Webb to save the day. You guys are in trouble now with Joe Webb on the case. And then lo and behold, you know, I don't think he really won the game in that game. Um, but dude was making passes, dude was making plays, dude could run. Um, and so I started throwing out the phrase, patented Joe Webb heroics. Because, you know, when you're down in a game, and both of your, um, you know, franchise quarterbacks are out. Who are you going to put in? Who are you going to put in? Tyler Polko? There was no Tyler Polko yet. That wasn't a joke I could have made. Tyler Polko? Or Joe Webb? And now we know the answer is Joe Webb. Because we've seen Joe Webb. We saw him this season, too. He came in to save the... Well, not quite to save the day. But he came in to do things. He came in to do things. And he happened... He happened very much. Okay? Uh, I promised myself I wasn't going to talk about this. And then I went and quoted it. So... I don't know if there's going to be a fourth season of Community. And Community is my favorite show. Um, it might be my favorite show that I've ever watched. And I don't know if I'm going to get to see more of it past this year, past this season. I just... This show. I love this show. And... I don't... I don't know how to explain it to you if you don't watch it. I don't know 
how to make you understand how smart and how funny this show is. This show is like someone figured out things that I find, I personally, me, that I find funniest and most entertaining and just put it all together. <sighs> this show is like it was made for me to watch it. And I know there's probably a lot of people that feel that way, because, you know, we all, all of us who watch that show, all of us who watch Community, really feel in our hearts that it is important, that it is hilarious, that it says something to us, something more than any other show, any other show on the air, and I just, I want more of it. I want more of a show that thinks it's really, really funny to do an episode about a missing man that leads to, you know, I'm, I'm not doing it justice right now because I'm drunk. I want more of a community. I want more of a show that, understand, that can do an Apollo 13 parody, basically, uh, and just totally pull it off. I want more of a show that can just throw out a bottle episode, and it's great. I want more of a show that is that self-aware and understanding, and I don't want to be in the darkest timeline. I don't want to be in the darkest timeline. And... And I will not give up. Okay? I've said this before in writing, and I'm going to say it now while I am just three sheets to the wind. I've watched so many shows die. I've watched so many shows go down without a fight, and I'm not losing this one. I'm not losing this one. Six seasons in a movie. It's a... It's a... Stupid. Fucking Big Bang Theory, man. You assholes who watch Big Bang Theory and don't watch Community. Fuck you. Okay, I, I'm sorry, that was rash, that was rude, but fuck you. Alright, alright, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop for tonight. We got a level, we got uh, a good chunk of the way towards level 11. I'm gonna do more of these, because I did to talk a lot more about football than I anticipated I would. I thought I would get some more topics in there. Um... All I can say is that I am tired of shows that suck. I want more community. I will not give up. There will be six seasons, and there will be a movie.
I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. I, I'm thinking about community. Okay. I'm thinking about it and I'm getting lines in my head and I'm trying to pick one to close on and I can't because they're all just the best. So, I guess there's not much else to say. Uh, I'll see you next time. Six seasons in a movie. Good night. Oh, Troy and Abed in the morning.